Hi friends, this is Barb Pask, doing a, something a little bit different tonight, hopefully enjoyable. Going to um, paint a still life for you, which I do that frequently. You can tell by the title, and maybe the title's what brought you here, that um, I'm keeping Helen Van Wyck in, in, in mind tonight. I'm not copying her. I'm going to try to use some of the elements that she used when she painted. If you don't know who she was, um, she had a series on PBS. You can look here on YouTube for her and find a lot of her videos. Helen Van Wyck, W-Y-K. She uh, passed away in 1994. She was only 64. You know, it's funny, the older you get, the <laughs> younger people seem. And, you know, I would have thought she was older than that. Um, quite the character. A very no nonsense lady, lady, a very good painter, and uh, she had some things that were kind of unique to her. She's a very good fine art painter. You know, it's funny. I was looking on you on I googled her and uh, to find out when it was she actually passed away, and uh, there's quotes that they attribute to her, and one of them, which I've said over and over, is a painting is a series of corrections. That's one of which I didn't realize that came from her. Um, so we'll, we'll keep in mind some of the things she did. Um, below in the comment section, you know, if you've got memories of her, maybe you could write them in or um, things that you attribute to her, you know, maybe things that you remember that she did when she painted. We could share those things. Um, she's a cool lady. Yeah, I know she has a lot of fans still, but and if you're not familiar with her, I, like again, I would go check her out. Um, so I'm going to do me, but we'll, like I said, we'll keep her in mind and try to in incorporate some of her techniques too. Um, let me show you what I've set up here. A crock, a couple apples, and a bottle. Didn't put a you know a whole lot of thought into it. Um, I did a setup the other night where I did a different kind of green bottle, and I really liked the way it reflected into the. I did a whole different setup, but into the crock. So this is a little bit similar to that. May or may not put the cork in the bottle. I don't care. We'll see. Um, I did, as you can see, I did. You're not directly. I am more of a straight on view of it, but I did overlap items as you see. Um, she talks a lot about things not kissing, as she called it. Kissing is when two items would just touch each other like that. That's something she always kept into consideration. I mean, when you set up a still life, either keep it completely away, you know, don't just let it just barely touch. Uh, she also, you know, considered the height of things like, you know, right here, as I can see, that's almost lining up, so we'll probably, we, that would be a reason to get rid of that cork, to pull the height of that bottle. Mm, it's real close, so we'll think about that. That's something to consider, too. Um, she always considered where the fabric hit, like you wouldn't want the fabric to hit right at the top of the apple. You know, things to think about. So. I'll show you first what she would do and then think about the way I would do it, um, the way she would do. Like I said, she was quick. Obviously, anybody that has a half hour show, they have had to work quick, like her and you know Bob Ross and who oh, and I'm not comparing them. I'm just saying they had to work quick. I use a view catcher. I don't imagine they existed for her. We've got a lot of cool <laughs> things to use now for painting. Um, I don't recall her ever using anything like this. My mother-in-law was an artist and uh, I think I still have it, but my father-in-law was handy. He was a woodworker and one of the things that I have, I think it's out there in the garage, like he built her this cute little canvas carrier. It was on wheels and she could roll it around and take it plein air painting. You know, now we have so many wonderful things available to us. But I'm going to look through my view catcher. You know, this is what I would use to set things up on the canvas placement. 
you know, you don't want to get too high on the crock. What she did, she would just kind of do an area, you know, maybe like that, and she knew her placement had to go in there. And inside that, she would then say, uh, you know, she would do something like that. Crock is here, bottles here, apple here, apple here. I mean, she was just quick and no nonsense, and it was kind of, and then once she did that, then she would usually develop her sketch a little more. Another thing she did, I recall, is she would draw a line like right at the center of her, that bottle, for example, which, and then she would do like the, this would be the shoulder of the bottle, and she would consider that this size was the same as this size and get her container, which I was a good tip too, you know, get her container symmetrical, you know. So I'm gonna sketch it in, which, you know, that placement's not bad, what we've got going there, so I'll kinda look at that as I sketch, and uh, I don't actually do a real I'm pretty quick too, and I don't typically do a, she would never sketch that handle in, probably. So, kind of doing my thing, like I say, in some of hers, considering how she might do it. And these are just the things I recall, you know, like I said, feel free to share your thoughts on her and there's a shadow back here and a shadow on the wall here. She was fun to watch. Um, she was an oil painter. I'm an oil painter, but I do use water mixable oils. She did use a medium some kind of toxic medium, I'm sure. I think she mixed a concoction that she made, and there are people that still do that. Um, stand oil, I think it, linseed oil. But I use the water mixable oils for health reasons, so I don't have to deal with solvent. Um, but because of that, her paint really moved. You, you remember seeing that if you watched her. Her paint really moved nice really smooth and mine doesn't I mean I can add a little water to mine and they make mediums for mine don't get me wrong I could use a medium I just choose not to okay so that's close I don't, you know, for me, I don't want a real picky drawing where I, uh, I'm painting in the lines. Even though the drawing's very, very important, and uh, I'm going to bring this out a little bit more. And again, there's a handle there. Now, how do I feel about that? It's time to stop and look at it and see how I feel about it. That's one thing about a drawing is um, getting a bit of a drawing in there. Before you get going, you can decide if you like your composition. Move that apple down. What I do is uh, typically I look a lot at negative space, like how far up to the apple does this go, then how far up for the crock hits, you know, helps you draw. You know, we've got a lot of negative space in here. You know, how do I feel about that? Part of that's just obviously the way I sat it up. You know, we could go a little bit bigger with the crock. It's going to pull the apple down further. You know, we can't go too much bigger. We can bring it up a little higher. 
which would bring the bottle up a little higher. There's a nice shadow there. And we got some cool stuff going on in the bottle, on the crock because of the bottle. Some uh, up in here feels more like a shadow, but this down here is light coming through onto the crock. So I think what we'll do, um, which is, I don't typically do this, but let's give this a try. She would normally paint her background in now. I always paint my background in last, so. But it can't hurt to do that. I mean, I can still make adjustments. So I'm just going to mix up something very dark. Ultramarine blue, um, transparent red oxide. With the palette I use, that's the darkest dark I get. I can throw crimson in it too if I wanted. But uh, that's what we're starting with. And I am going to dip my brush in water just a little bit, try to get this to move better. And we'll put this sh darkest shadow shape in first. See, that's a really warm dark, so we're going to put a little more blue on it. Okay, and we're saying this is hitting. Now we got to be careful, we don't want it to hit right on top of the apple. And the apple's probably more up into there, so we're okay. Like I said, I recall hers moved really smooth, and that helped her paint quicker, too, you know. We're not going to worry about the handle yet. It's fun to try different things. I, I own a lot of DVDs, and um, a lot of times I'll... I'll get a new DVD and then I I try to do what they did just for practice, you know. Now I'm lightening it up a bit. And we don't want to be too precise drawing in the shape as she wouldn't have been either because uh, the shapes are not probably correct for one thing. And so much of the bottle is the color of the background that I think we'll just paint, paint it in. Which is something she would have done, I think. And you get over into here. Of course, we may be painting over this background again too, but I'm going to put a little yellow in it because it gets just a little warmer over in there, closer to the light. I think she was married quite a few times. I remember talking about her mother-in-law, I don't know which mother-in-law, but <laughs> driving them crazy. I think one of them would come over with a white glove and look for dirt and, <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're gonna leave the uh, foreground for later. We'll go ahead and we'll start with the crock now. And it's white. don't want it bright white so we'll start with we'll start with white though I always start with the color you see when we look at it we see white um, I'll put some yellow in it and maybe a little transparent red oxide it's all trial and error I'm 
dirtying it up with some of that mixture that I made for the background. And I'm going to stay with this bigger brush. All right. A lot of times what I believe she did too is she would uh, mass in the general tone of the item. Then she would come back and introduce darks and lights. And I'm not saying, and you may disagree with me, that that isn't how she painted. I don't think any artist does the same thing every time. These are just, again, some of the things I recall her doing. I don't know about you, but I do not do the same thing every time. And a lot of times, even though I have a plan, it changes midstream. because this has obviously got to have more of a glow in it, and I see that, looking at that. Um, here's one thing I remember her doing well, which I thought was pretty cool. Let's see if we can get it in there. Making something a little darker here. Yeah, she would paint in the shadowed side, okay? And then, let's see what would be the best. We'll just take another soft brush. This is something I thought was fun she would do. Then she would do this. That's something you probably remember, right? And I've got some softer blending brushes here. We'll, I don't know how they'll work. I'm going to be dirty in a lot of brushes, probably. They're almost too soft to blend with, I think. looking at that deciding if I want to bring the crock over. Another thing she she I did see her do was sometimes is like she would just make the edge of something disappear into the shadow and then you'd have a lost edge. You know, a lost edge is when you can't really define the edge of it. The value's close to the background and that can be very interesting, I think. There's a shadow over here. So right now we, can, we have a lost edge, so we'll see how that works as we go along. All right, let's move to the green bottle. Nope, we got to do the top of this guy first, which it's a dark color, a warm dark. So we'll start with transparent red oxide, and we'll put some ultramarine in it to get it darker. It's pretty dark. You know, and again, I'm kind of doing it one color, but it is not one color. We'll have to come back and uh, put highlights and uh, I like the transparent red oxide. It's a nice rich color. I don't know if it's on your palette or not, but it's really one of my favorite colors. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I've got a lot of videos on here and I paint pretty frequently and uh, from life a lot. 
Thank you if you are a subscriber. Um, I love your comments. Please consider commenting too. In the last video, if you recall, I talked about that little fluffy dog that I painted and I sent to Canada and uh, I checked on it and they claim it was delivered but the people never got it so I have no idea in the world where it is I don't know why anybody would want it if it wasn't their dog but post office showed it was delivered so that's all I you know I can't do any more than that just a loose suggestion of the handle but very disappointing you know very disappointing I wanted them to have it and of course I painted it and then I paid quite a bit to ship it and so it's real disappointing. Maybe it will show up at some point. I finally told them what it was I shipped and I gave them links to the, the video here on YouTube so they could watch it. <laughs> you know, there's your painting but I don't know if they'll ever own it. And of course there'll be a darker and lighter edge to that too, of course. And there's kind of a, a ridge on the top. Kind of a plain croc. Some of them, you know, have numbers. This one does not. Got a nice highlight up here at the top. There's some discoloration here too of a lighter kind of warm color. We'll see about that too. All right, let's now move to the bottle. And it's gr a green, so we'll mix up a green. Finally, I got up to 100 subscribers. <laughs> Happy with that. It's a start. Open in time, I'll have a lot more. I mentioned it last time, but you know, we get get up to a certain point, we'll, we'll do some kind of a giveaway. All right, so I'm mixing up a green, but this green is more of a blue-green. Now, I have to look and see what we see. With glass, that's what you're doing. You're <clears throat> trying to paint what you see. And what I can see is a dark background to a certain point. And I see the bottle and I see the crock. So this down here is white from the tablecloth. Once we warm this up, I'm going to try to bring some of the, the green over onto here, the um, reflection, it's kind of a shadow, it's, I mean it goes through the bottle, so it's very subtle, but it is a shadow of the bottle, but I think it will be fun if it's more of a green color. And like I say, I can kind of see white through here too, it doesn't look white. Let's get that from the crock. You can see it up into the neck. Things are distorted to, through there too, you know. I can see through here. It's 
not as bright as the tablecloth, but we're seeing the tablecloth through there down to a point. And then we see the bottom of the bottle. And again, I'm not super concerned with things being just right yet. We're kind of, you know, blocking in. Some of these areas are a little bit darker. Here at the top, I made a decision on that cork yet or not. If we wouldn't have the cork, then you would see behind the bottle. back in there. Well, let's move on. We'll block in the apples now. These are fake apples, but they look pretty good. One is green and red. Can you see? They make pretty good fake fruit now. So there's no reason. I wish they had good cut fake fruit. I don't think that exists. Okay, um, we'll do the brightest part of the apple first. We'll do the green part. Actually, more yellow than that. And uh, kind of goes around the, the whole hole where the stem's coming out. to the red part of the apple. Okay, I'm looking at this. Part of this is darker. Part of it's picking up reflection from the, uh, the tablecloth, understandably. So we'll put a little white in that, trying to lighten it up a little bit. Again, it's early and we'll be adjusting probably everything before we're done here. See, one thing I don't like is this is kind of divided in half, so we're going to move that over. Now the other apple just really <sighs> doesn't have a lot of color variation in it. It's red. 
got a darker, darker side. That is pretty dark. Put a little bit of that in here. I'm on Facebook and uh, Instagram, which I don't do a lot with. <coughs> Excuse me. Barbara Pass Fine Art, you can find me on Facebook. This is really just straight paint I'm using right now. this apple in front of that one. Brush is kind of polluted so we're kind of losing that color. These are boards that I buy off Dick Blick. This, uh, I, they are a gessoed hardboard, but I put a couple more coats of gesso on them because they're way too slick to use as they come. Yeah. What do you think about my jammies? <laughs> Polar bears, I think. My Christmas jammies here. You probably Did you see those already? <laughs> Glamorous. I'm comfortable. All right. Let's go back and take a little look at this crock again, maybe develop it a little further before we do the foreground. Not too worried about it yet. That's the easy part. All right, back to the crock. There's some uh, weird, well, it's really old, so there's some weird color variations in it. And I like things to be painterly, so I am not out to make things photographic at all. A little bit of a cooler light there. Really bright highlight next to that up here on the lip. And that's one thing Helen never would do. She would always come back in and develop her highlight. I did hear her say that if it looks like a blob of paint on there, like on the glass, you know, then it's not correct. So. I'm going to mix up a little bit of orange. That can be a fun color to have. I don't use a tube orange, but it can be a fun color to have on your palette for a lot of things. We're going to put a little bit in here and warm up the edge of this. It's in the light side. See if we like that. Got some highlights in the handle we're going to put in too. Okay. I'm going to um, take some white, take some of that orange, and I'm going to brighten, brighten this up. 
need more white. Brighten up this crock where it's catching light. It's got a hair in there. It's a fighter. Okay, so that's a nice, rich, warm color. And what we're gonna—I I see the bottle's not real developed, and it's kind of crooked looking. We're gonna work on that. What we're gonna do now is try to create this shadow shape we see in there. Painting is always a challenge. I've said that before. I think it's part of the reason it's just irresistible. I mean, it just, if it works, it's great. But it sure can kick your butt. Okay, let's work on this bottle. I haven't talked a lot about myself on here. I've been painting full time like a mad woman for probably 14 years. Um, all my life, probably like all of you if you're artists, I loved art, I drew. I did every kind of art project I could. Paint by numbers, everything. Um, hit a point in my life where I was doing art shows, but I was sewing and doing woodworking. I had a wood shop and I sewed hundreds of rabbits. <laughs> and, uh, but I tell you what I really enjoy was when I would sit down to paint the wood items that I created. It was really fun. And then I went through a period of my life where I was painting folk art when that was a big thing. And I sold tons of folk art on eBay and uh, painted on everything possible. I'd buy old windows and we'd take the glass out and put paintings in them and paint on antique corbels. I did all kinds of things. And then when I, probably 14, 15 years ago, we had moved into this area and I saw an ad in the paper. They were starting a plein air group in this area. It said, bring your lunch, br bring your easel. Um, so I showed up, I didn't even own an easel, I had to buy an easel because I'd paint it like on a table, you know. And I showed up with my little craft paints because <laughs> that's all I had. I had never painted a real object in my life, you know. I had painted folk art mostly out of my head and so I sat up in front of a flower bed and proceeded to paint flowers. Um, and we stayed together that summer and when winter came the group wanted to continue on so we found an inside location and we painted outside for a couple summers and then the group weren't really plein air people and uh, the second year I started I chair that group now and I've chaired it like from second year on and we're like we have like 20 members and I have a waiting list of about 15 people and we only paint inside most of them I mean, not some of them paint out, but not as a group. A lot of them are not interested in plein air. I do both myself, but uh, it's a great group of people. I consider them friends. And we're all members of the local arts council. 
our group was created by them, and uh, which a lot of advantages to that. We do an art show together every year for the festival, and then it moves out to the college, and that's about the only thing we do as a group. I mean, everybody does their own things, and and we mostly work on our own projects. I bring a lot of still lifes in, and. In a rare occasion, we have a model, but uh, most of the people are doing their own thing, working from photographs or, or bringing in their own setups, or we do monthly critiques, and it, if you can be a part of a group, I really recommend it. we got all ages, too. We lost our oldest member a couple years ago. She was in her 90s. She was fantastic painter. I adored her. Now our oldest member is probably 86. It just doesn't matter. It's just fun. We all love art and, and when you're together in a group, you know, you share products and you share opportunities and, you know, when you know those shows coming up and uh, it's great. Trying to develop this bottle a little more, see what I see there. Don't know if the cork's important or not. I might turn this upside down to, to get the proportions right. And the crock's not done obviously yet either, I gotta go back to it. And put more highlights in and well let's um, put some highlights in the bottle and see how that feels got one on the rim Helen always talked about the concave and the convex, and you would follow the plane with your strokes, you know, the direction of your strokes. And I'm going to brighten these up a little more. It's pretty intense. And she would probably always develop a highlight. I don't think she would ever just lay it on and, and leave it. Those are only really bright highlights that I see on there. be interesting. I'm, I mixed up some, um, this is Thalo, which you, if you're familiar with that, man, that's a kick-ass color, <laughs> but I uh, just thought it might m make the bottle prettier and more attractive. Throw some of that in. I'll throw a little bit of that into the reflection over here, too. See how that reads later on. I stay with pretty big brushes through most of the painting. I am going to get out a little brush. If there's a highlight here, there would be a highlight here. I haven't pulled that cork out, but I should. And then the highlights on the handle got one here and then it's a little warmer and lighter 
around here. Okay. where the stems come out of is actually like a little cone shape. You probably know that. I mean, we're not. Oh, I see a shadow here and a shadow from the stem over there. I'm trying to paint what I see. This one, it, with them being artificial, you know, it's, <laughs> sometimes you have to make some adjustments so they look real. brighter up here and obviously around there. the highlight on um, the apple apples and that was one thing I noticed she did okay my highlight is actually just a little probably due to the light that I have a spotlight on it so my highlights kind of rounded um, this is how I saw her lay a highlight in though heavier and bigger than you needed it and then she would cut it back so we're going to try that you know doesn't work it doesn't work but she was always thinking about the direction that things ran and you know I think when she laid her brush strokes on she thought about the anatomy of a thing you know how it was made up uh, let's try to now pull them down a little bit and see how that works. You know, I don't want to do away with it. I can come back and add some more to it, but we'll kind of work it in for now. Let's see. Now let's put a little bit more on there. And some people, there's all kinds of things about highlights. Some people say never do pure white. Um, some people do the compliment which is another thought. I mean, like on the red apple, you know, how would it look to do a green highlight? Let me, let's try it. You know, on top of that, you could still do a little white. Let's see what that looks like. Kind of fun and unexpected, right? You know, how do we feel about that? Don't know. The highlight's not super bright on the apple because of the flesh. Probably your most intense highlights are on like glass, you know, a reflected item. Which we're going to kick those up a little bit. Got this nice highlight here. You know, and again, what color is it? You know, I'm looking at it. It's warmer, so it's in the orange family, probably. 
we'll go orange and then we'll go because it's really pretty bright there's a little bit of a highlight here and that's probably going to need to be pretty white to show up You know, I like seeing paint. She, oh, she was very, I considered her pretty painterly. I mean, even though her things were realistic. A lot of it, I believe, is confidence, and she was confident, and uh, we can be our own worst enemy, I think, you know, get into our own heads, and, but she was, very confident about what she did and I do think that helps feeling as though you can do it you know I think we're gonna I'm gonna flip this over which is something I would do and we're gonna take a look at the shape of this bottle this is a good way to see if things are symmetrical. And, and it's really not quite, so let's see what we can do about that. And that feels better. better. It's a really good way to look at things. Um, you can sell, tell when you turn it upside down too where your eyes go on and what's your focal point then. And But it's really good to see if things are symmetrical and straight. To photograph your work is really, really helpful too. I don't know if you do that. And it's almost like looking at someone else's work when you do that. Photograph it, get it on your computer, look at it in a thumbnail size. Really helpful. See, the inside of this needs to be very, very dark read like a whole and this would be more rounded than I got it even though again I'm not going for realism and I'm always looking I like reflected color you know, so I put a little bit of the blue up in the crock there. Of course, it's here, too. Um, up on the bottle here, I see some red from the apple. And that kind of thing is just fun anyway. Even if you don't see it, put it in. Oh, let's get some stems on our apples. All right, where'd my little brush go? Here it is. I think I told you one time I should get it out and show you sometime. I took a workshop and we did a lot of fruit and um, this gal, she did her stems just by, she'd wiggle on the top and pull them down. That's how she created the stems. Worked for her, I don't know. I, with these not being real apples, oh, well, I'm going to have to paint this stem later anyway, as I can see, because I don't have the background in. So we'll stick it in, but it would be covering it up anyway. So, And this one, it's got a, it, again, they're fake. It's got a weird little stem laying over, which I don't like. So we'll just stick that in for now. But we're going to want to highlight these stems anyway, so... Well, let's move on and get something mixed up for the background. 
Again, we're going to start with the general color, what we see, which is white. And actually, I'm just going to mix it into some of this crop color from earlier, and we'll warm it up a little bit. And typically, where my foreground and my background meet, I don't, I don't want a real precise hard edge. Um, some people do, I don't, and so we'll probably play with that. Okay, so I'm looking at the shape of things. Oh, one thing we need to do before we get into this is let's put some shadows in here. We'll just mix up uh, some blue and some crimson. We'll make a a purple. See how that reads. Now this is a shadow of the apple, and. Uh, runs over to the bottle there. Of course, we'll have to put some shadows under the apple and, and get this crock setting down nice and flat. And then there's a nice shadow over here where the, for the, from the crock. And there's a funny little shadow here. Again, we're seeing through it from the bottle. Okay. All right, back to the tablecloth. A lot of people don't care for a la prima, which is, means all in one session. <coughs> they paint in layers and um, let them dry and come back. And The advantage of that is you don't get into your colors, but I kind of like getting into my colors, get unexpected things going on, and I like it. And then the background. It's more over into there, so we'll need to move that shadow up, won't we? Okay, a little water in this again, get it moving. Um Oh, one thing I did not do, but I see Helen do a lot, I noticed a lot of her canvases are toned gray. Probably, I'm guessing she did that because it kind of gave her a mid-tone color to start with. Um, I, I do a lot of orange, typically. I didn't do anything this time, quite obviously, but a lot of nice advantages to that. You know, then you're not fighting a white canvas. But again, that's the things I recall. I'm sure she, like all of us, didn't do the same thing all the time at all. This is a nice thing about oils. It's still wet, and you can still push it around. Um, doing that with acrylics but I like acrylics too for some things you can layer and layer and layer with them okay this is very very dark what I have on here we're going to try to ground some of these things Again, we pretty much got a lost edge over here, which is kind of nice. Okay, we got a 
put that stem back in. This is something I'm going to do that you might not agree with. I like things not perfect and painterly and I like letting the viewer figure things out. And All right, let's get our liner brush back out and we'll try to put the stem back in that one apple we had to take it out. see if we like that or not. If we don't, we don't. I'm always saying paint what you see and I'm not quite doing that because this apple has a little short stem which I really don't like so too little of a brush here I'm farting around with and you know we'll end up with stuff I don't like doing that I was trying to put in some of these darker shapes that I didn't have in see what works for me and what doesn't. see having trouble getting clean color here now I don't know if I like that but I see that let's see brush again. It's really bright over there and I don't really have it that way so put some of that in there. thing I see I've got to change is I got to bring the lip of that bottle over it's hidden right there it's uh, kissing as Helen would call it and I know that's a no-no so we'll get it
Now I'm looking at the shape of this and I'm feeling as though the whole neck should be higher. are common crocs. A lot of people own these. I own a lot of them. <laughs> I own a lot of old things. A lot of old wood things. I'm kind of drawn to old wood things. Butter molds and coffee mills and course Crocs and it's been a lot of years collecting a lot of stuff now now it kind of gets on my nerves all right let's bring this out this lip over the croc it's kind of a big brush to be doing this with really almost too big Put that uh, highlight back in at the top of that crock. And then again, we lost that the blue. Let's um, kind of as a whole, the whole edge is a little bit cooler. Let's play with that and see what we think of that. Pushing back the edge of that bottle a little bit. And I kind of lost the edge, which is maybe kind of nice. we've been at this just over an hour that's not too bad introducing a few darks back in here mentioned it, but not for a long time. I, I, I like C.W. Mundy's work, M-U-N-D-Y. He's on Facebook. Um, I've got a couple of his DVDs. He likes the idea. He's one that he tries different things all the time, and I admire that. I mean, why not? But one of the things he talks about is uh, having something unexpected in your paintings. 
you know, it can be a, a stroke or a color or just something you wouldn't expect. That's his feeling, you know, kind of an interesting perspective. Kind of trying to play around that kind of curves back behind there, even though I don't want it real particular. I gotta be see that over here. I've got a complete lost edge over there. Which I don't know. Kinda like that. We'll go back up to the top here. I can see a hole in the top of the crock. So we'll lay that in. little liner brush. Now, there's something I see I don't have. There's a little tiny highlight inside the crock. A little crock in, I mean, I'm sorry, a little highlight in there. A little one there. I got that one there. And so we have one that kind of lines up with those. I think we had our bottle better earlier. That's what happens when you play around with them. feel as though we've gotten him a little misshapen again. It'd be hard to paint exactly what you see. It's really distorted looking through that glass. And that's all much too light. call it maybe. Let's see. Looking around just a couple things. Clean up the shape of that bottle. bit I think. Let's see if we like that. A little heavier paint. Make it fun. People like seeing paint I think. There's a gal, Michelle Byrne, is it, I've got one of her DVDs and uh, she's a palette knife painter. And 
Well, you know, she, I don't think she was doing really, really well, and she made the switch over to painting with palette knives. I mean, she had good drawing skills, and she was a good artist, but uh, when she made the switch over to palette knife painting, things just took off for her. You can find her on um, Facebook, B-Y-R-N-E, I think it is. One thing she always did, I think, was she would put people in her paintings, and not everybody was doing that. And uh, that worked for her. All right, so one thing, you know, with that cork in that bottle, it's kind of in my way. I'm going to have to take it out, and I may have to develop the neck of that bottle a little bit more because it's in my way. But find me on um, Facebook, Barbara Past Fine Art, and then when I post this, you'll be able to see if I made any changes to it. Um, this is the thing of, that's bothering me of everything, so I'm probably going to work on that a little more. I just think it needs a little more work. too picky with stuff. You don't have to explain everything. But I have pretty well, haven't I? All right, the things I do like, I do like the reflected red from the apple in there. And I like our blue reflection on here. And the blue up in the crock. So some things I do like. Some things, like I said, maybe have gotten too picky. I don't know that I care that that bottle be perfect. All right, so let's give you the tour. I'll show you. When you paint a handle like this, it's good to look at the negative space, you know, look at the hole and that'll help you get what you need. All right, so I'll stand you up, back you up. I'll show it to you. Again, like and subscribe. Add your comments below about Helen. I mean, uh, memories that you have of her or techniques that I didn't hit on that you think are cool to share. We can share that with each, with each other. So there it is. I mean, some good things. Like I said, I may develop the neck of the bottle a little bit. As you can see, I um, still got that plug in the top, so couldn't exactly see what I was doing there. Mine's a little different, but it's my impression of the setup. All right, join me again. Um, I'll paint for you again, or maybe I'll teach you how to make soup. <laughs> I had to say that, right? Good night. Thanks so much.